Jack Cole's miracles changed cities. Yeah. They changed the time. It, 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 it was a place in time where times changed. People's lives were changed. Just the miracle to say, oh, we had a miracle on Sunday morning and then Monday you're back out there. The move of God that's coming now, these miracles got people really saved. I really got saved. Yeah. And I think a lot of people really got saved. We're not just in church. In every generation, there have been revivals, massive moves of the Spirit that changed the course of history. In every revival, there were believers like you who chose to answer the call, to become the one in their generation. Discover your call to be the one in your generation. We're about to take you face to face with history. Welcome to Revival Radio TV. Glad you're with me today again with an audience. Give yourselves a hand. Yay. And back with uh, Jack Coe. Thank you, sir, for coming. But we also got another guest, Sam Nix. Sam, thank you. thanks for being on today. Wonderful. Now, um, Sam, I did not know you until Jack mentioned you on the phone. And the more he talked about you, the more I felt like we needed to have you on the program. So I'm glad you were able to work it out to come join us today. But I want people to know your history because it goes all the way back to this guy, A.A. A. Allen. And uh, I want to know, what's the connection? Well, it goes back to Jack Coe, actually. Okay, And Jack the connection Coe. is, I think, I'm thankful uh, in the Bible is said for such a time as this. Right. And I'm thankful to be exposed to both ministries yeah, and to know so, them. So you had a connection with Jack? Jack Cole, first. I was, received my first healing. Really? My parents were, uh, took us to the meeting and when he came to Niagara Falls, New York, he had the big tent Right. and my people were of another denomination. Mm -hmm. And so when he came in, in the big tent, my mother decided to go. And in between the tent meeting, we were little kids and I was running around the tent and out and back in the swamp. I stepped on a nail that went through the bottom of my tennis shoe and came out the top of my foot. Oh, wow. And uh, so I went and told my mother my foot was swelling and she grabbed me and we ran and sat at the front row of the tent. And Now, what year was this? <laughs> this was in the 50s. Okay. Jack had to be... I was about 11 nine. years old. And he's a little older than I am. Yeah. You could tell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Okay, okay go ahead. And uh, so my mother waited on the front row, and when Jack Sr. came in, she ran up. She said, Jack, Jack, uh, Reverend Cole, Reverend Cole, could you pray for my son? And I was sitting there with the bloody foot, and it was swollen up, and it was turning all kind of colors. And he turned around and said, Yes, ma'am. She said, Here's some oil. Would you pray for my son? And he turned around and said, Jesus, heal this young boy and let him be healed. And that was it. I never had any problems, never went to the doctor, wow. never had any problems. And then he said, I bless you with healing. And that was the first time when I was healed instantly. I never had any problems with my foot. Praise I never had any problems. And so all I knew was we didn't have medicine. We had anointing oil. Mm. And that was through Reverend Jack Cole. Yeah. And then I... We didn't have medicine. Say that again. We didn't have medicine. We had anointing oil. Boy, we need some of that, don't we? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, A.A. Allen came to town. And so I was involved in the community. Now, that's a different word for some people. I was not involved in church. I didn't like church people. I didn't want to be a church people, but somebody had prophesied to me and told me that God was going to use me. Mm -hmm. So A.A. A. Allen came to town and my mother asked me, would you take me to this meeting with A.A. A. Allen at the Klein Hands Music Hall in Buffalo, New York. This was in 1965. And so I said, well, I'll take you, but I'm not staying. So when I took her there, it was probably 5,000 people and I thought, man, I'm going in. Yeah. So. <laughs> I went, in, I went into the meeting and uh, I hadn't planned on it, but the music was good. It was different from my church. Mm. And A.A. Allen started preaching 
And when he started preaching, I thought, this man doesn't know me. This man doesn't know me. And he preached. And the, it wasn't so much the miracles, it was the altar call. I had no intentions at all of getting saved. Mm. I didn't want to get saved. I didn't have a desire. I was not hungering and thirsting after righteousness. <laughs> <laughs> and Brother Allen said, when I count to three, God's going to turn your life around and you come to this altar. And I turned, I had my shades on, my little hat on. I thought I was a little, what do they call them, thugs or gangsters yeah, yeah, right. in New York. And we were involved in grown folks stuff. And I turned to walk out the door. He said one, and I turned to walk away. He said two, and I took the first step. And when he said three, something turned me around. I ran down to the altar. I was the first one down there. Wow. And all I knew was I hadn't cried in two or three years. And the power of God was so great, something got a hold of me. And I said, God, if you'll save me, I'll live for you Man. for the rest of my life. Now, how old were you at this point? I was 17. 17. I had just graduated from high school. And, and so I got saved in that meeting. I was so embarrassed because I was crying. Right. We didn't cry in my neighborhood. That's a sign sure. of weakness. Sure. And I just, I was so embarrassed and everybody else was getting saved. And so on my way out the door, uh, I, I was looking for my mother because I had to drive her home. And so somebody said, hey, cool. And I turned around and it was the organist from A.A. Allen. And I said, oh man, you the cat on the organ. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, you need to go to Bible school. And so um, what happened, he said, here's a number. And I hadn't planned on going to Bible school. And so I, um, I talked to him and then another guy came by and he said, hey, cool, what's going on? So I guess they were talking to me. And it, <laughs> anyway, I, a few days later, I took the number and, you know, you get saved, then you go back and face your guys. Right, right. You know, and I told the guys, I said, I got saved. And they said, oh, man, come on. <laughs> 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 you know, that was the power. I didn't see many miracles, but Alan had that 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 attracting power it was it was it was meant for me and i didn't know that right i called the number for bible school and they said we're full we don't want anybody we don't have anybody thank you and i said well that sounds that <laughs> a few days later somebody called me and said hey did you call that number and they said call it again and i called and they had said well we want you so i had a week to go down to bible school and i went from new york to arizona yeah the miracle valley miracle valley well, that's, that's a lot like New York, Miracle Valley. Oh, is. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? I mean, I, you're, so you're like 17, 18. I'm 17 like going on yeah. 18. Wow. So I went down to the, uh, it was different for me because I was raised in the city and, and Arizona was no it's city. Not, it's no. still not that way. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and when I got down there, I had, I sang. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I got to know Brother Allen. When I got there, it was... They had to get used to me. They had never really had anybody from New York. Right. And I had never really been around people from Arizona that were from Alabama. And this was in the 65s. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. But something happened and um, uh, Brother Allen came to town. And so we were singing in the choir and Brother Allen said, uh, where's that boy that was singing in the choir? And they said, we gonna put him out. You know, he doesn't fit down here. <laughs> 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 because they had wanted me to work in the hayfield and I had been accepted to work in the printing department. Right. And I went to a, a technical school, uh, uh, school where I studied printing. And so they were going to put me out and I said, no, I'm leaving. So Brother Allen said, well, where's that boy? Where's that kid? And so they came and they said, we want you to go to L.A. and sing in the choir. And I said, I'm going home. I'm through. And from then on, uh, Brother Allen kind of said, you know, he pulled me to the side and talked to me, and we talked ever since. God gave me favor with him. So every time he would come in, he would call the students over, and he'd bring us over and give us food to eat, and, and he'd bring us over to the house, and he'd talk to us and encourage us. Wow. So that's how the life started. At midnight tonight, Brother Samuel. Samuel Nix will be in charge of the all-night prayer meeting. People will lay their hands on these little claws after seasons of fasting and prayer. And according to the 19th chapter of Acts, verse 11 and 12, in five days, a bit of cloth healed the sick and drove out devils. Jesus, according to the scripture. Then we the would go, he would say, why don't you come to um, uh, Chicago? I went to Chicago and he said, 
you know, come on the platform. And I went on the platform and there were 10,000 people there. And he says, here's a young man from our Bible school. He said, you got five minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> It's a faith statement. Yeah. And he would yeah. put me up and I would get up and take my little five minutes and the crowd would say, yeah, and, I, and it was on. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, he would say, okay, tomorrow night. And so we, uh, that's kind of kind of how we got to know each other. Then during the camp meeting, he asked me to come down. He's, I said, I don't want to stay in the dorm. He said, you can stay at my house. I said, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worthy to stay at your house. I didn't feel like I was worthy. And so I, it was a price to pay. So I, st <laughs> I stayed at his house, and then every night you couldn't sleep because he'd be walking around, and, oh, God, oh, God, heal that lady. Heal that lady, oh, God. And I'm thinking like, oh, God, let him go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very spiritual man. <laughs> <clears throat> but he, he would pray. And then he, he had sliding glass doors. This was back in the 60s. And he would slide that door open. The morning he woke it up, he slid the door open. He says, uh, you're leading song service for the more, 6 o'clock service. Right. And I was saying, oh, God. Now, did you hear what he said? <laughs> 6 o'clock a.m. service. A.m. Okay. So you're going to lead the song service. We lead the song service, and he at six a.m. Six a.m. I'm kind of hung up at that six a.m. We'd have to we'd have to get up at five, and we'd have breakfast. Yeah, wow. He didn't eat for thirty days. The camp meeting would last, and he didn't eat. Mm. We had breakfast. If I ate, <laughs> 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 because every time Alan would come home, they would kill a cow for him and cut it up and put it in the refrigerator. Right. And he would have everybody over, all the, some of the greatest preachers in the country would come to his house. Wow. Some of them, you'd see him on television, tearing him up, dogging him, you know, the, a month later. But he was always that kind. And he would get up and he would say, God's going to be, and he would sit there at the breakfast table, God's going to do something sensational. And I hadn't been saved that long. And I'm thinking like, okay, okay. And I led service for the six o'clock service and then I preached some of the youth services six, before the evening service. And I know I messed up. I know, I know the saints just prayed for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned something and he would, we would walk around and he'd say, God heal that lady. Pray, pray for that lady. And he taught us and he didn't put up with any foolishness. He said, anytime you get on that platform, anytime you minister, you make sure you spend more time with God and you make sure you ask God to use you and don't get up there in yourself. Wow. And that went on. I was with him until he died and, and we traveled together. We traveled. I did, we didn't travel together, but I would be in the meetings. Sometime he'd say, well, we're having a two o'clock service. Would you mind testifying and speaking then that? And we became, um, we would talk and he would tell me a lot of things. Being that young, I didn't understand. But when I look back, I thought, what a great opportunity because we saw miracles. And I would see him. He would get up and they'd introduce him. God's man of faith and power, Reverend A. A. Allen. And he would get up, roll those cameras. Bring me that blind lady right there. And we would sit there like, oh, yeah. And he would bring the blind lady. She'd come stumbling up on the platform. And they would carry her. And he would pray for her. And the lady would see. And he would say, bring me that deaf man. And he would pray it. And I'd sit there and saw those miracles. Wow. Saw those miracles. And he would turn around and he said, that's what God can do when you fast and pray. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. <laughs> Here's a man bound with arthritis and paralyzed and dead from the waist down. Absolutely impossible to walk. Doctors declare there is no help for him. That he'll never walk again. Get ready. Do you believe you'll walk again? Yes. When? Uh, right now. Right now. Amen. I'm going to speak the word. For him, I'm going to speak the word for you here. And I'm going to speak the word for you and your home and you and your home. You there in your home, you in your home. My God is going to move the mountain.
Will he walk? Yes. Will God set you free? Yes. Get ready. What God will do for one, he'll do for everyone. And if God will not do it for everyone, he'll not do it for anyone. Thou mountain of helplessness, thou mountain of destruction, thou mountain of arthritis, thou mountain of demoniac power that binds these limbs, Command this mountain go. Be thou plucked up, removed. Oh, you mountain of crippling arthritis. Go. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's the one thing you remember most? If you have to take something that you learned from A.A. A. Allen in those years, what, what would that be? Brother Allen had a love for the people. And it wasn't him. He relied on the power of God, the same power that drew me into that auditorium that night, that same power that drew me down to the platform, that same power that caused people's faith to believe. He had that love. Mm. And he would always tell me, God put you here. God sent you here not to fool around. And I've noticed one thing that when I've asked God so many times, let me have that same mm. spirit and that same anointing. Right. All right, so how did Jack, how did you guys reconnect after all those years? Jack had a tent up. What happened, Jack? You called me and... Well... I called you and you came over to the tent and we got <coughs> back together and started going in meetings, working together. Do you know when that, do you remember when that was? 73. Uh, was, so yeah. did you know, did you recognize each other at that point? We kind of knew of each other. So when Jack called, I said, to work with him, this man of faith. <laughs> and I came down and Jack, I think Reverend Cole didn't know the anointing that was on his life, but I saw it. Yeah. And I said, if I could just be around this and, and push him and, and back him and push him. And uh, I loved talking to him because I, I <clears throat> felt that faith. It, it encouraged me to continue to live and expect the supernatural. And we went places. That's really good what you just said. Learn to live and expect the supernatural. I mean, that's... That's the essence of what we talk about, right? With yeah. faith and yeah. living by faith and walking by faith. Expecting the supernatural. That should be, that should be a bumper sticker. Expect the supernatural. <laughs> you know, that's what we need to do. That's good. Right. Yeah. That's good. Right. Yeah. And that's the way Jack was. When we came down, we came to Jack's house. It wasn't like, okay, you, you, out, you over on this side. Jack shared everything. We were brothers. And I never saw, and I love that about uh, Reverend Jack Cole and, and Sister Juanita Cole. He never made any difference between him. He shared everything, didn't we, Jack? We, yeah. shared, we shared food. We shared if we didn't have anywhere, if we had to sleep in a van. <laughs> but Jack, I came to his house, and Jack was just like, this is your house. Right. And I stayed in Jack's house, and I said, I stayed in Jack's house and A. Allen's house. Boy, I'm, I don't realize how you blessed You get around. I am. Yeah. You did well. So, okay, now let's fast forward to today. Now you have, you're pastoring a church in Dallas. Pastor of the Lighthouse Gospel Center in Dallas. Wow. So, it's been, there's been a lot that's happened since A.A. A. Allen and Jack Coe days. Where do you see the body of Christ? Where are we at right now? If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and turn from their evil ways, seek my face, then I'll heal their land. Mm -hmm. But I see it's, it's time for revival because you, I look back at Numbers, the 14th chapter, when God said, I promised you all of these great blessings. I promise you supernatural. And one million people said, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. And God said, the show must go on. And there were just two. And the Bible said they had the same spirit right. 
as Moses. So all it takes is one or two to have that same spirit. And as long as you got people that saturate and sending that unadulterated word out and putting that out, as long as there's a Joshua and a Caleb, there's always going to be a revival. Yes, amen. <clears throat> you know, can I say this about Jack? Please. Jack has such an anointing. Yeah. And like I said many times, I don't think he knows, but genes pass. And Jack was coming to my church and we're there on Sundays and, and Jack said, I'm not feeling well. And I said, Jack, come on. Jack came to the service. He wasn't feeling well. But the power and the anointing was still on his life. Jack sat down in the chair and preached and prayed for people. And I said, don't look at his condition. Look at the flow that's flowing through him. And even though Jack was, was feeling okay, I think after he got to preaching, he felt a little better because he did walk <laughs> around a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> but people lined up, their faith was on that, that when he laid hands on them, many were healed. And the lady said, well, I was looking at him saying, how can he pray for me? She said, but then when I saw the faith and saw the anointing and people were testifying to being healed. They said, I have went back to the doctor. They called Monday and said, my blood pressure has gone down in my heart. I, I don't have to do that anymore. And while he was feeling bad, the anointing was there and they were healed. And I thought about Elijah being in the grave. Yeah. You know, his dead bones were there, but the anointing was still in his genes. Yeah. Yeah. People are still healed. That's right. And when a man of God prays, they're still blessed. God still meets their needs. Right. Because the prayer of faith will <clears throat> save the sick. That's right. And the Lord raised them up. Amen. And Jack has a supernatural anointing. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll say this, Jack. You know, you've had a, a rough go here, but man, yeah. when you, the last program we did together, man, it was, you were strong. I was. I haven't, I, I haven't I seen got you home, that I way. I felt strong. It's a good, and good word. I'm going to be strong when I get home today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, so I have one question I meant to ask you. Okay. A.A. <clears throat> a. Allen, there was a comment that he made about Miracle Valley being the camp meeting capital of the world. Camp meeting capital of the world. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. If you, I mean, people we didn't see. I would sit there and he'd say, sit over there and be quiet. And I remember... Um, O.L. Jaggers, I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. him. He was a great guy in L.A. And he would come there and all the preachers. And then after they'd leave, Alan would vent, and I was his vent man. <laughs> you know, that guy, believe God, I want that kind of faith, that faith. And different preachers from the Assemblies of God would come and be comfortable at the house. Mm. And then they would uh, leave. And then you'd hear all kind of things. And I know he told me one time, he said that, you know, they said things about me. And he said, this is what happened. And he told me about Knoxville where they accused him. When you drive a man's car for 30 days, mm -hmm. have access to his closet, his, I wore his jewelry, <laughs> I drove his car, mm -hmm. and I had only been saved a little while. You're looking for something. Yeah. Had I seen anything? And that's why I didn't want to get saved in the first place because everybody, I've met some preachers and they said, we want to meet you. I said, we're fine talking on the phone. I don't want to meet you. Yeah. But Ben had access to his closet. I wore his shoes, his suits, drove his car. You know, I said, I'll, I'll drive you for 30 days. And he told me, he said, sometimes when you leave people, they do things to kind of discredit you. He said, but nothing was ever proved. So I thought about all the accusations and I was going to preach in one church at the Assembly of God because they had to integrate. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, he can't preach here because he's been with A.A. Allen. And the pastor said, he's packing this church out. We got 800 white people and 20 black people love him. He said, we thought we were going to pull black people. Yeah. But people are people. I went to the guy and I said, show me you accused Alan of all these things. I said, let me tell you what he told me and then you show me the proof you had. And they said, well, we heard, we heard, we heard. I said, there was never any proof. But when God saved him, God saved him. Nice God. And I believe, I believe that the man, if I had seen anything, I drove his car from... If anybody would have seen it, you would have known. Yeah, it would have been in his car. Yeah. 
you know, you, you're not going to be a, I, I've been around drug addicts and alcoholics. You got something, you got to stay somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you can't hide it in your home and in your car, where'd you leave it in Chicago? Right. Because I would have saw it because I, I always try to keep my eyes open and I never, I never saw anything because I would not be saved today. I think had I seen anything, but I can, I would stand on and say, I have I've been around there and what, unless you see something different, I, he, if he did, he kept it. He kept it from me. He kept it from everybody else there from 12 o'clock at night to 12 o'clock the next night for 30 days at a time. Mm -hmm. And then make me pray and then you, oh no, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I believe he was real. I never saw anything. Yeah. But you know, Shambach said that if he was drinking, we all need to drink from that same bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, only R.W. could say that. Yeah. Yeah. But he got some more people saved. It, it was the salvation. His miracles changed. The, the Jack Cole's miracles changed cities. Yeah. They changed the time. It, 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 it was a place in time where times changed. People's lives were changed. Just the miracle to say, oh, we had a miracle on Sunday morning and then, and then Monday you're back out there. The move of God that's coming now, these miracles got people really saved. I really got saved. Yeah. And I think a lot of people really got saved. We're not just in church. Right. You know, um, and in Chicago, he lined up, he, he got up and, you know, he's, he's very dramatic. He said God was a sensationalist. And he got up and had the spotlight in the back and lined up seven wheelchairs. And he said, walk with me. And I walked with him and I felt that anointing. I, I feel like putting my shadow somewhere now. <laughs> <laughs> and when he walked, he was so dramatic, he lined them up. He said, one. And when he stepped and that spotlight went between him and that wheelchair, he said, get up. And I had been backstage. Lady jumped out of that wheelchair and went to running around that tent. And the people lit up and all seven of them. And we looked forward to that. I mean, it was such a, you were ready. I mean, you were ready to quit Bible school and go save the world. People came there, they want to, I mean, <laughs> they, were, they were ready. And it can happen. Ministries, lives, churches change. They didn't just get blessed. It changed. But after, you know, the camp meeting, you know, it was just back to the valley again. I'd just go out and ride my horse. I had a horse to ride. I'd ride it down to Mexico and, and pray and see God and say, God, one day give me a ministry like that. Let me be a blessing to somebody. I don't think it was ever green, though. It was desert. <laughs> <laughs> it was desert. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't just a one-time thing. The miracles attracted people, but more people got saved during Brother Allen's meeting that stayed saved. Yeah. And I think that's what we are having today.